Yavapai Broadcasting and the City of Cottonwood proudly present Inside Cottonwood, an inside look at the decisions and issues of the City of Cottonwood. Brought to you by Arizona Smile Designers. Here's Cottonwood City Manager, Doug Bartosz. Hello and welcome to Inside Cottonwood. I'm your host, Doug Bartosh, and I'm here today with a couple of special guests. Steve Estes, who's the Outreach Coordinator for the Verde Valley Land Preservation Institute, and John Neville from Sustainable Arizona. And they're here to talk about a, a new program, and it's called One for the Verde. And so who wants to kick it off to tell us what this program's all about? Let's go with John on this one. John? Uh, okay, One for the Verde. It's our opportunity to painlessly help uh, fund the effort to uh, ensure that our water resources are preserved. And the Verde River watershed thrives. The natural areas are kept natural. Uh, the habitats for all the birds are, are in good shape. And it's uh, every time we do a, a normal transaction at participating businesses, they add a little bit to each expenditure, and that goes into a kitty combined with lots and lots of other expenditures that people make every day. And over time, that adds up to a good amount of money that we use to restore habitat, to restore water flows in the Verde River, to preserve the water quality in Oak Creek, all those kinds of things that uh, we need to do here to, to keep the good quality of life that we enjoy. So, um, first off, it's you go around to businesses and and they volunteer to do this. They say, "Yeah, this is a this is a good uh, good thing for our community. I want to participate." And and so, what do they do when you say a little bit? What are you talking about? Well, it varies from business to business, but here's a okay. good here's a good example. I brought this little thing here. This is um, this I picked up at River's Edge shop. Mm -hmm. It's a great little shirt. Every time I've worn it, people said, what a wonderful shirt. And uh, <laughs> this shirt sells for uh, $15 at River's Edge in Old Town Cottonwood. And so when I purchased this shirt, the shirt cost me $16.88. There was sales tax. I expected to pay sales tax on it, right. and so I paid that money. Well, out of that $16.88, 15 cents went into the kitty to uh, to pay for the one for the Verde programs. It was something I didn't even notice happened because it's normal when you go in and make a purchase like this, when you buy anything at almost any shop, to pay a little extra in sales tax. But this isn't a tax. This is my private donation to something I care about, something here locally that's really important to us. And uh, that's all there is to it. All, all the businesses do is they put a little sign on their window that says we participate in One for the Verde. They have materials, if I have a question about it, that they'll hand to the customer that explains everything we're all about. We have a wonderful website, oneforthevirde.org, which has all sorts of information on it. Okay. You know, it's interesting. I have one of those shirts, too. Mm -hmm. and it's a great shirt, and I get questions about it all the time. Yeah. And the other thing... Um, I didn't pay for it. They gave it to me because I think they, <laughs> thought, I would, city they yeah. thought I would advertise it, I think. but And I have. I, I mean, me I've too. gotten sure. tons of, of where did you get that shirt? Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, the other thing that you mentioned is is there was only $15, which I, you never buy a shirt for less than 20 anymore. But uh, I think the other thing that makes this attractive is people who want to support the Verde have the ability to, to see the decal and say, you know, if I want a shirt, that's that's where I'm, I'm going to go buy it. Right. And, and so that's got to be some of the concept, too. Sure. And the other part of it is, is what we do for the businesses is we do a lot of promotion for them. We have ads running on all the, radio, the local radio stations here uh, promoting the businesses, saying look for that blue decal and go and shop there. Uh, we have ads in the local papers. We have press releases, all sorts of things that say look for the blue decal and shop here, and you'll be doing one for the Verde. And certainly, if you go on the website, 
Um, you know, you have a whole list of all the businesses that are participating. So if somebody's interested in, in uh, getting involved in this program, that's certainly a great uh, resource to find out who's participating. Right, exactly. So um, I guess, you know, you've talked a little bit about it, but, uh, you know, tell the listeners where you got this program, where it came from. Well, this goes back to uh, Bob Rothrock, our president of Verde Valley Land Preservation. We've dropped the name Institute. Um, oh, did you? Say? Yeah, we did. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I just wanted to make clear. Um, anyway, Bob was uh, uh, came across some programs that he thought were you know really interesting. Um, one was in the uh, uh, up in the Reno area. Another was Reno, Nevada area. Another uh, Truckee area. Right. Truckee mm -hmm. River area and. Um, the other was in Crested Butte, and you got kicking it around at board meetings, and you know this would be a great program. They have a one percent for open space up in Crested Butte, and they were like the first one in the nation, and they were they've been at it for you know over a decade, and they've uh, really made some real important um, environmental uh, uh, strides in their community. They bought open space that otherwise would have gone to condominiums and such, and they looked at their their community, and they said, you know, our community is about you know the beauty. Uh, of this uh, of this environment, and that's what brings bikers and hunters and and fishermen, fisher persons, um, uh, skiers, snowboarders, and all forms of vacationers uh, to our town, and which really makes our economy happen here, makes our our lifestyle the way we want it. A beautiful town with a way to make a living, and um, so that wheel is turning really nicely up there. And so we finally we pitched it to our funders, uh, one of our funders, the Walton Family Foundation. And um, asked them if they would be, be supportive of a uh, of a phased process of first going and looking at their project and seeing if it would be transferable to an environment like ours, and then if that looked good, then we would step forward to the next step. The next phase would be to ask around our environment, our Verde Valley area, and um, and uh, so we did that. Uh, so we made a visit to Crested Butte, and the thing that I came away with, among a number of other other uh, impressions, was number one, the program is very widely accepted. Number two, objections to the one percent being added to something are extraordinarily rare. And number three, and I think most important to me, was the fact that as I spoke with business owners, um, as well as uh, just the man on the man and woman on the street, um, in terms of folks who live there. This program is probably one of the top, if not the top, um, contributors to a sense of community pride. That the whole community is proud that we do this as a community and that we've made this work. And that we've created the kind of community and maintained and sustained the kind of community that we know works for us. And so they're very proud of that. And they had some other things. I think there was a, something that there was, a, when I was there, I noticed a big sign out in front of a the middle school, I think it was, that w it was an extraordinary accomplishment. Was some national award was um, was given to them for excellence or something, and um, uh, it was a national award, like number one of this type of school in the nation or something. But this program was, you know, stacked right up against with that in terms of a sense of community pride. So I want, thought that would be a, an added benefit that we, we brought it here. So. We did our surveys in town here, and not in town, in the whole Verde Valley. We have surveyed how many folks? Do you have the number on uh, that? A couple hundred people plus, uh, uh, oh, 50, 60 businesses as well. Yeah, as and so anyway, we checked the businesses. You know, they thought it was a really great idea. We talked with the people on the street and the potential customers who might have an extra four cents added to their mm -hmm. cup of coffee, and they were okay with that. Very okay, very, all they very were positive, enthusiastic. enthusiastic. And, um, and and then we also talked to our um, our, our partners in the nonprofit uh, realm because mm -hmm. frankly the way this works is that once these funds get to get accumulated, there will be a board and we're working on that right now formulating a board that will be overseeing these funds, making sure they're taken sure. care of and not run right. away with, and then also we'll we'll field. Um, uh, uh, promotion or, or projects uh, that are that are uh, suggested by right. these various um, nonprofit agencies that right. work on anything related to the health of the Verde River or the health of the economy as it as it relates to the river and its watershed. Okay, so um, anyway, we got through that pro process, and then we talked to our funders and said, "Look, 
here's what we found. Uh, we feel very positive about this working here. And they said, okay, let's give this a shot. And they funded us all along the way. Now we have to say that Crested Butte had to do this with no funding up front. They yeah. started out with one guy, a business owner, who said, we gotta do something formulated his own get-together with other people. They've started piece by piece by piece, and it's taken them over 10 years to get to where they're at. You know, we probably have, have accomplished in the last year and a half mm -hmm. um, what, they had to do, what they had to do on their own, I would say at least half the time they've been at this. Yeah. You know, they have 80 businesses. We have uh, approaching 30 businesses already wow. signed up. That's great. Okay? And, you know, we want to have 100 by this time next year. Yeah. Um, so anyway, if you could imagine, uh, the, the beauty of this is it's really painless at the, at the point of sale for most people at the point of sale. It's quite painless. Um, it, you can do something good and, and not feel a lot of pain, um, any pain. Sometimes it's, it's negligible. <laughs> and then that all piles up um, into a very significant uh, fund. And, you know, the idea of, of nonprofit organizations living off funders you know, the funders don't want to stay here forever. They want right. to get you on, you know, sure. on your feet on and, your and on your own as best yeah. you can. Now, not too bad to get a grant here and a grant there and a little fifteen thousand right. there and ten thousand there. But these two hundred and five hundred thousand dollar grants that we have seen around here, you know, to get things going, they're not going to be around forever. Right. You know, these organizations such as mine are going to have to find ways to do this. So that's just one way of doing it. So, and I just want to add one more thing. The thing that makes this really work, there's a lot of things that make it work, but a key to it is that there is, there is ubiquitous advertising, ubiquitous uh, signage in the paper, on television, mm -hmm. on the radios, all the time. And so that's what makes it work because if people don't know what's happening, then they will object. Right. Why are you adding this on here? But if you walk into yeah. town and there's no way that you could not know this is happening. Yeah, it's good. It is good. Let's go ahead and take our first break and come back and join us and, and we'll find out uh, what the plans are for this money. Come back and join us. Welcome back to Inside Cottonwood. I'm your host, Doug Bartosh, and I'm here with John Neville from Sustainable Arizona and uh, Steve Estes, who's the Outreach uh, Coordinator or director, director director for the Verde Valley Land Preservation. No institute. <laughs> so we were talking about this new program, one, one for the Verde, and I, I got to tell you, I I think this is a great approach. I, I've been involved, you know, I live down in Scottsdale and they have the, you know, Sonora, Sonora McDowell land preserved down there. And uh, certainly they recognize the economic benefit of open space down there. But what they did is they took the approach of actually imposing, uh, a, a, you know, an increase on their sales tax mm -hmm. to help you know, get money to begin to, to buy land. Um, I'm familiar with an, another program out in Ventura, California that uh, they're trying to preserve their hillsides and, mm -hmm. and uh, they've been doing concerts and grants and things like that, but I'm, I'm not sure how much money they've really raised. And they knew they couldn't ever get a sales tax increase, you know, passed out there. But this program, again, it's, it's all voluntary. And, and I think with the interest in the Verde, and I think most everybody, I hope everybody recognizes the economic value of the Verde River, um, that you know everybody w would seem like they'd be very supportive of this program, not only because it's a good cause, because, but because it is voluntary. And I might add that it's not, you know, it, it is indeed the Verde River, and that's sort of the central stem of uh, our, you know, oftentimes when you talk about the watershed or our region, it's the Verde region. But this is the entire watershed, which includes all the tributaries, especially like Oak Creek. Sure. And so now we're talking all that, all that tourism that comes up and down Oak Creek, all the way down through 
cottonwood right. all the way into into Camp Verde, and um, you know ecotourism or tourism. I, I've always thought tourism generally, especially this side of the Mississippi, was mostly eco anyway. Uh, outside of a couple, a couple of big cities, one of Chicago I've heard of, there's a town back there. Um, but other than that, you know, it's people come to see the outdoors and be in the outdoors and <clears throat> have a different experience other than their day-to-day -day living. So, um, so it's the whole watershed we're looking at. And uh, we, we called it one for the Verde instead of 1% so that we could have flexibility uh, in terms of how these monies are, um, are collected. We prefer the 1% because that's a nice, easy stream that comes all the time. But if somebody wants to have, like they had up at Crested Butte, a pizza, the 1% pizza, and it was a very popular pizza, so they chose a smart one. And so a big <laughs> chunk, if not all of that money, I'm not exactly sure how that works, but every time they sell that pizza, the money goes to this this so, uh, program. So so it sounds like you have the potential to, to begin to collect money that you can really do something with. Yeah. And, and you know, we've had a lot of great uh, projects going on. I think one of the things that, we were really interested in was the re removal of the invasive plants. I think that's huge in, in terms of uh, conserving our, our river and our water, yet not completely damaging the riparian area. Mm -hmm. So what other kind of projects are you guys thinking about? Well, let me just give an example of, uh, of one of our successful projects that uh, VVLP has had uh, recently. Um, and a project like this might be something that would be otherwise funded. Um, VVLP and Friends of the Verde River Greenway and uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, their partners program, uh, and Yavapai County all found ways to pitch something in um, to uh, take what was a 35-acre dump out in the Verde Village area mm -hmm. uh, that happened to be along some incredibly beautiful, otherwise beautiful, um, a riparian, uh, you know, stretch of the Verde River. Um, and so what we were able to do, you know, the problems there were many. They were um, abusing the land with uh, ATVs and four wheels. They were dropping and, you know, just everyday junk, mattresses, computers, mm. you know, hi-fi equipment, you know, any stuff that's hard to get rid of otherwise right. or just, just be easier to take it down by the river and dump it. Right. Um, and then there was the issue with the invasive species. And, you know, um, just briefly, the, the invasive species choke, flood, cause fires, uh, and um, alter the, uh, uh, the environment such that the natural forms of life like eagles and beavers and stuff don't, can't live there. So that's the brief, mm -hmm. the brief on why invasive species removal and management is important. So we did all those things, and then we made sure that, uh, that uh, vehicle access was uh, absolutely restricted. And we created a nature preserve. And um, yes, it took some money, yeah. um, but that's the kind of, that's just an example of the kind of thing that can happen. Another thing that could happen is you could literally purchase up uh, private property that's up for, um, for sale. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess private property ultimately is always up for sale if the price <laughs> is right. Um, uh, and to actually purchase that and conserve it. Another thing that you can do is, is say a large rancher or agricultural effort um, outfit um, has important riparian involvement as well, sure. maybe at the confluence of a couple of rivers or something, and have you got like, you know, 100 acres or, you know, something like that, and it's important environmentally, and it's time to consider what are we going to do with this property and, you know, down the line, mm -hmm. and if they, if they can, if the owner can be, be convinced that it's, it's a good thing, to conserve it forever and not have it go to, you know, rooftops mm -hmm. um, and sewage and all the other stuff that happens right. in the environment. Uh, it's just to keep it in its natural form or in, an, in at least in an um, uh, agricultural form um, that they could place in, uh, uh, a conservation easement on that. Well, that sounds mm -hmm. easy. Yeah, we'll just sign the paper. Where do I sign? Well, it's very expensive. Sure. And so we could help, help with some of the expenses of that as well. So those are just a couple examples. If you know if you can think of any. Uh, others, but there are a number of others um, that... Well, water flow. Yeah. Water flow is uh, important. Uh, the Verde River is our visible sign of a healthy watershed because the mm -hmm. Verde River is all spring-fed. And so if the Verde River is looking good, it means that our water, the cottonwood water and, yeah. and uh, all the water in the communities along the area yeah. is healthy. And this brings to mind, you know, a couple of other projects that could be funded by this. One would be... Um, uh, ditch efficiency, 
mm -hmm. you know, for, for you know, high, uh, higher efficiency. Another would be um, like Oak, Le Oak Creek Watershed Council is focusing on is water quality, mm -hmm. you know, uh, pathogens that are in the water um, and other pollutants, the ways to measure that and then come up with ways to mitigate that. Right. And so, you know, those are, again, a couple more other ideas about things that could be funded with this that otherwise aren't getting done. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and take our next break and uh, come back and join us and we'll talk a little bit more about maybe some of the potential projects that uh, could be accomplished uh, if we have a good source of uh, income flow from this, from this program. Come back and join us. Welcome back to Inside uh, Cottonwood, and I'm here with uh, John Neville from Sustainable Arizona and Steve Estes from uh, VVLP, no I, and um, <laughs> we're talking about one for the birdie. You know, and, and I think, and, and I don't want to, you know, um, this isn't a trick question or anything, but I think it's, it's an important discussion, and, and I kind of hope that this is part of the the uh, thought process too is is there the potential to um, raise enough money to where you could potentially bid on state trust land and and take that off the market in terms of developable land it's uh, my in my feeling on that it, well Crested Butte uh, has been around for 10 years they have a million two a million eight in their trust fund with that kind of money, you can do that. You mm -hmm. can make bids. You could contribute uh, over time. We, Crested Butte is 1,400 people. 80 yeah. to 90 businesses are engaged in, in, a, in a small town of 1,400 people. Wow. The Verde Valley is 65,000 people. We have over 1,000 businesses just in the Sedona uh, Chamber of Commerce. We have the potential over time with these little pennies at a time donations yeah. that we make locally to amass a fair amount of money. And we could collaborate with someone on state trust lands to do something if that was seen to be in particular benefit for the entire community. Right. I mean, this whole thing, one of the reasons I like the program so much is that it's us using our money to take care of our place where we live and it's doing it in a really painless way. I don't know about you, but every year when it comes time to get ready to pay my taxes, I write as much money as I possibly can to the school credit and community credit program. I've got a couple of checks I need to drop off. That's right, and I do that every year because yeah. I know where that money is right. going. Absolutely. It's going to something I really care about, and right. it's here. If I send my check down to Phoenix, who knows where it's going? Yeah. And this is us doing the same thing here, but it's painless. You don't even right. notice that you're doing you it. You don't feel it. And we can look strategically. The nice thing about this whole program is that it's a funding aspect for a, um, an interlaced group of organizations that includes the chambers, the tourism bureaus, uh, Verde River Institute, uh, uh, Verde Valley Land Preservation, Sustainable Arizona, Keep Sedona Beautiful, Verde River Basin Partnership, et cetera, et cetera. There's all these groups who have a common interest in preserving what we value here, which is our quality of life. Right. And what we're doing is we're keeping, we're pooling our funds to be able to do that, and we're going to use it strategically. We're not just going to throw money willy-nilly here and there. Uh, we have a, a criteria in place mm -hmm. for uh, uh, applying for grants. Uh, we will have an advisory board which will include community leaders plus business participating leaders. 
uh, and, and leaders in uh, the different aspects of what we're trying to accomplish to say where will this money go and how can we use it most beneficially. We intend to keep aside money so that we don't just spend it as fast as we sure, get it, right. so we amass it over time. Right. So 10 years down the line, sure, we may be involved in something significant. Now, now would you have any ability to leverage that, uh, that funding to get loans or? Grants. Grants. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Mat grant matching grants. Like absolutely, sure. yeah. matching grants, perfect way to do it. There would be a wide variety of opportunities you know, it could be a lot. If all they need, all that has to happen is there has to be, you know, a high likelihood of good outcome, right? And that the uh, the, the the people that are uh, applying for funding from this entity would be, of course, just we would have the same kind of scrutiny, give the same kind of scrutiny as any other sure. grantor. Absolutely. That would be that you have a track record, that you have you know legitimacy, that you you know have. Uh, have completed successfully project projects in the past, and you you have an efficient way of doing things, all that, all those kinds of things. And and so um, I think we wanted to talk a little bit about the economic benefit uh, of this for our communities. And can you guys talk a little bit about that? Well, I can start it, and I think John's got some ideas as well. Is that um, there isn't you know it, it would be stupid to say that if there wasn't a river, uh, that there would be the same kind of activity we have going on here in the Verde mm -hmm. Valley. Um, there's always going to be a river. We're not worried about, you know, the, uh, I mean, we are worried about it, but we're not saying, oh, my gosh, and the river's going to dry up. we got to do something right mm -hmm. away. What we're saying is we've got a great river. We have a reasonably healthy watershed that is worth keeping healthy mm -hmm. and making healthier, okay? And that watershed has sustained always what Cottonwood and the Verde Valley, all of the Verde Valley has been, everything from all the way from Sedona on, sure. on down past uh, uh, Camp Verde. Um, uh, and so much of what draws people to Jerome and to Cottonwood and to Camp Verde and to Sedona and all of those municipalities and the, the ones surrounding the, the, the Corinvilles and the Lake Montezumas and all that kind of stuff, uh, entities, they all benefit from wide open spaces, clean air, mm -hmm. great climate, um, water resources that are not only for just con you know, consumption and for convenience, but for recreation and just the beauty. People come here because it's a uniquely beautiful area. Mm -hmm. And so Absolutely. that's why the stores in Old Town are where they are. That's why it has a lot to do with Jerome, you know, the, the tourism that happens there has a lot to do with what happens up in Sedona, um, as well as Camp Verde. So um, if you have a degraded, uh, unhealthy, um, uh, unusable, unsustained watershed, you could very, very easily count, you would lose count really quickly, uh, the number of businesses and incomes that would go, that would just disappear. And so uh, we've got a really good thing and we're leveraging it economically, and a lot of entities around are making sure that uh, we understand the connection between our natural environment and our um, economic stability. So that's my speech on that. Yeah, and I, I look Great at speech. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I look at it from the uh, business owner's perspective, because uh, small uh, businesses uh, struggle. Right. And we have these business cycles that we deal in. And one of the things that we're doing as part of this whole effort is we're branding the Verde Valley as an ecotourism destination. And ecotourists, that means tourism that has to do with a sense of place. Eco means place, where you are. It's, mm -hmm. it's actually Greek means your home. And so people come here because of this special place. And we're working to encourage that because the ecotourist demographic are upper income. They come whether there's a oil embargo going on or not. Right. Uh, they stay longer. They spend more money. They like to do the local things. They don't come here and go to a, you know, some sort of a branch uh, store. Right. They go to the local Locals. shop. They eat local food. They drink local wines because right. they care about this place. So that's part of what we're doing also. And our whole marketing approach is kind of parallel to what Local First Arizona 
is doing as well. Right. And that is encouraging people, local people, to shop locally and encouraging businesses, uh, uh, visitors to shop locally. And that also raises all boats in terms of the economy. So and John's, part of that. John's mentioning you know, the term eco. Um, there's another thing that I learned some time ago that I find is very important for us to remember is that, that um, ecology and economy come from the same root word. And they, they mean the same thing. As a matter of fact, the first terming of the, uh, of the word ecology came from an analysis by biologists saying that there is an economy that occurs in the natural world. There's, there are economics that happen there. And so they are, they are intrinsically connected, our, our human economy and the, and the natural economy. Um, they are connected to the point where you know, we are dependent upon, we as humans are dependent upon our natural world to provide us with the things that we need to have to, to make things work, and the other way around as well, that the, the ecology, the ecological world, the environment, the natural world, now is dependent upon mankind to make sure that we use those resources, uh, some would say sustainably, I would say responsibly. So they're here for our grandkids and our great-grandkids. Just like the rest of our economy yeah. we're talking about. Yes. We're out of time. we got to go. But thanks to uh, John and Steve for coming in and sharing this information. And hopefully you guys will come back and give us an update every now and then. You bet. Um, thanks for joining us on Inside Cottonwood. And come back and join us again.